So here we are on the second spring. It's still looking pretty good, but there's some kind of mysterious play going on still with the air axis. But it's taken up just a few thousand off here along. There's a slight taper on this, and it, it just skimming the surface. Uh, I don't know how to get rid of that, but I'll do a bit more study of the software, and maybe I'll find something out and get it sorted. It's looking good so far. So we're now on the last of the splines. Uh, I just don't know what this thing's doing. It's going right around the full body. It's machining the whole damn thing and it's not meant to. It's kind of frustrating me and I don't know why it wants to do this. can't figure out the software. I'll have a look and check the dimensions and everything, but it's another scrap job. I'm sick of doing jobs that end up in a bin uh, for no reason other than they just don't do what I expect them to do. Anyway, I'll see what it looks like when it comes out. It may not be quite as bad as it looks. Okay, well here's the finished article. I'm not quite as disappointed as I was when I first saw it on the machine. I haven't taken it off and cleaned it up. I mean, it's, uh, it bears a remarkable resemblance to the shaft it's going to uh, replace. The only thing is these, I don't know if you can see them, these slight lands that extend up here. It probably one or two though, and there's a slight taper on it, and a little bit of a clash here uh, that's maybe even two though deep. I could probably get those out of there, but I prefer them not to be in um, on, on the finished article. I'll go back to the software and have a look. Maybe something to do with corner rounding or whatever. Or there another possibility is that uh, in the machine this uh, tailstock has pushed it higher than it should be. Uh, whatever. But uh, I'll see. We'll get round it somehow. Here we are on the third attempt at these planes. This time I think I've cracked it. Uh, the, I couldn't get rid of the awkward movements on the uh, program. So basically I designed the, uh, I made the drawing to get a slightly larger diameter than uh, stock. Um, it's large enough to be able to machine out the marks um, and it will return to the normal. Once the marks are out it'll be perfectly okay. It's uh, much finer cuts, much higher speeds and much more cuts so in general the finish should be better than the, the, the last attempt which was reasonably good. The lighting in here is poor. That's better, you can see a bit more there now in that place. Uh, we'll come back to it when it's nearly finished. Um, we'll see. Okay, well, uh, at last we've finished uh, the oversized uh, spline shaft with uh, a lot more steps in it to give me a better finish on the flanks. And I think this time it, uh, it's looked successful. I'll uh, check it against the original. If there's just a few though there, I quite expect that because of the step nature of the uh, cutting. But uh, we can soon blend that in and file that off or whatever, dress it to the correct thickness of um, spline. Anyway, it's uh, proved good. We'll have another look once I've uh, got it out here. Okay, well here we've got a set up for doing some half shafts. Um, you can see they're quite long. Uh, these work supported just here on some V-blocks and very conveniently uh, it keeps it at the same height. Um, if you look at this you can see if I uh, zoom along there's very little movement on that. There is so much. Yeah it's slightly high on this uh, end but if I uh, it's it's quite it's fairly tight on on this actually so I might just drop that down and finally you can see it's scoring that uh, that's what I'm going to do take a few thou over there. You can't see any. Very little movement. I'll try and uh, make myself heard above the noise of the machine. What, you, what you're seeing here being machined are uh, some splines. 
in uh, some EN 2040. Uh, these are, this is going to be uh, a half shaft for a 1920s Honda car. Um, the setup, I don't know if it's unusual, but uh, certainly the job was too long for the machine. So I took the end, cut, end guard off here and got, got everything set up on the uh, V block. And uh, I took some shots of when I'd done that of the uh, dial readings, etc. And everything was pretty good. Uh, there's one problem with the program, it does five and a half T slots, uh, uh, slots, and I don't know why. So, what I need to do when I've finished the five and a half is uh, re zero the rotary table 60 degrees further around so it starts on uh, one of the full slots and I'll re cut that slot. Um, I've also got an additional program such that if I do need to take the width of the vertical or the, the parallel sided uh, splines, uh, if I need to reduce them at all to get a bit, I can do that quite comfortably. Set up as it is here, just indexing each, uh, each every 60 degrees manually. It, it, it's not a problem. There's some, some kind of glitch in my software or my understanding of the software that keeps producing odd pods like this. Um, lots of collisions, etc. Oh, there goes a compressor. The company of noise here. We're on the last line of the first shaft, and it's gone very well. I, when I made up the program in Bootcamp to do this line, it warned me that there were some calculations hadn't been done, and also there were errors in it that said, you know, gouge of the part. Well, I found one gouge, which was a bit extreme left hand end of the workpiece from where you're looking now which doesn't matter because I've got excess length on these splines anyway so they can be machined out and also in the simulation it showed only half of one two profile be uh, one uh, spline uh, profile being cut at one stage yet so far and looking at the amount of the program that's still left to run I think this is going to be okay but because I wasn't happy with the program with the initial splines, uh, when I checked dimensions they were uh, really poor. Three of the splines were correct to within a thousandth of an inch, and the other three were way off. So I came up with a program to dress the flanks for the wider splines, and we'll see what it's like. Yeah, my little rescue program for these splines is working okay. The only thing I have to do is to, between each uh, tooth that I'm cheap, uh, cutting is to reset the, uh, the A axis to zero uh, to ensure that it cuts the tooth that I want. But basically it's doing fine. Okay, well that's the splines checked out. They're all within half a thou of uh, what they should be. There's some slight gouging at the ends here, which I'll take out with a Dremel just uh, lately. Uh, there's still about 5,000 to come off the overall diameter, so any signs of damage or you know, incorrect machining will be gone. There's about half an inch extra length on this end that will get rid of the gouges that were up here. In general, I'm quite very pleased with it. It's, it's turned out okay. The next phase will be to a cut another one and B uh, to um, machine the taper and the thread on the other end of the uh, shaft which will be done in a manual lathe but I might as well uh, make a little film of this lot and get it all together. Okay it's not a very clear picture but there's one of the spline shafts I've got to before I can proceed any further I've got to uh, push this shaft out of this drive flange here well, okay, I didn't have to resort to the use of the hydraulic press because the drive the hubs on the end of these shafts were actually loose. Uh, this shaft here is different to this one in that it's longer. If you look at this shaft here, it looks to be shorter, but then when I try the broken piece on the end, 
it's more or less the same length and I just don't know it's kind of odd to me there's something odd about these I'm going to have to find out what what if there is a reason why there's a long one and a short one and uh, it looks to me as though maybe somebody tried to put the short one in the uh, in the lot well put the long one in the uh, short the one that's meant for the shorter shaft if you see what I mean and has caused a problem that's uh, made the end of the shaft stress the end of the shaft somehow I don't know it's really odd they're strange however maybe just that the differential or whatever that drives them is uh, offset to one side of the vehicle slightly so we'll see I'll uh, I can make a start on one of them in the lathe so that's what I'll do next it'll be to machine the taper and uh, cut the thread on the end of the shaft which is a straightforward lathe job okay well we had some spare material on the end of the first spline shaft so I was able to do a test run and get my top slide set over uh, you can see there that the, the the dirt is pretty evenly distributed up the taper and it's a good fit in the hub so I've left all the settings unchanged. I'll now go ahead and I will cut the parallel portion for the thread and then the taper and then I will take them out of the lathe and redo, remachine the, or oh, not remachine, but reset it up again to do the threads on both. Now there we go, that's my shoulder marked up. Just cutting the parallel portion for the thread and then I'll do the taper. I'll take that one out. There we go, nearly there. I'm just cutting it slowly because it's quite an overhang and I haven't got tail stock support here. I like to use a four jaw chop for centering stuff accurately. Three jaws are useless. Uh, anyone that's done any work will know, or a reasonable amount of work on a lathe will know that. Very few. They're only as good as the first time you use them, three jaw chucks, as far as I'm concerned. So I always, when I've got accurate work I want to do, I will centre it in. Okay, well here we are, we're uh, just cutting a tape I know. And there you can see, uh, I'll get a bit of a close up. It's quite a good finish on the shaft, for considering it's not on auto feed, it's just by hand. So I'm quite happy with that. It's got to go up to this mark here. Slightly past that mark because this bar is about 5 thou, 10 thou larger in diameter than the uh, finished article should be. So we're getting on. We're doing alright. There's another cut done. I'll uh, set the zero on the dial, move it out and then bring it back along. And you can see it again, good finish, so it should be okay on this one I think. And we've just about finished the, I think this is the final cut on the table. I can see my mark, yeah, we're just about, that's me at my mark, you can hear it. And that's right on there, and maybe another tooth out to come off. 